The Tonga underwater volcano eruption was so powerful that it was heard and felt over 2,000 miles away. The eruption was equivalent to a 5.8 magnitude earthquake and the King of Tonga has been evacuated. With the region remaining cut off from internet access, it is not fully understood yet as to what extent the damage from the eruption will be. Sunday, the 16th of January, in the year 2022, and the Lost History Channel, formerly the Kepler Telescope Channel, has reached an amazing 190,000 subscribers, which is another outstanding milestone for this channel. Now on with the show. A secluded island off the coast of Japan that is not only home to the critically endangered Japanese breed of small horses, known as the one metre tall Yonaguni horse, but also home to one of the most impressive underwater megalithic structures ever found from the depths of history. Wait to hear this. Discovered in 1987 by a diving squad exploring the marine shelf of Yonaguni Island and described as the Atlantis of Japan, the existence of underwater pyramid structures 25 metres below the waterline points to the existence of a lost, highly advanced civilization in the extreme echoes of history, with experts declaring that this could not have been made any more recently than 10,000 years ago. This massive 50 metres long by 20 metres long wide behemoth has dimensions and edges that are intelligent by design. A spokesperson from the archaeological department of Tahoukou University says that these formations do not occur in nature, however, the monument is described as a natural formation. And this is despite Yonaguni's perfectly carved steps with straight edges, narrow passageways, arched entrances and seemingly parallel 90 degree angles. The unusual formation of the site's well-defined layers are described in mainstream circles as likely to have gradually formed due to the site's position in an earthquake-prone area. Yonaguni Island is the westernmost Okinawan island and the last place in Japan to see the setting sun each day. It is the most remote of all the Okinawan islands and the hardest to get to. Robert Schock, who dived in the site by invitation in 1997, believes that this occurs naturally, and this was also the opinion of German geologist Wolf Wickman, who studied the formations in 1999. Masaki Kimura believes that the monument must have been pulled beneath the waves around 2,000 years ago when an earthquake struck the region. Masaki Kimura, who is a marine geologist at the University of the Ryukyus, estimates that the monument must be at least 10,000 years old, dating it to a period when it must have been above the water, and therefore surmised that the site may be a remnant of the mythical lost continent of Mu. In a report given to the 21st Pacific Science Congress in 2007, he revised this estimate and dated it to between 2,000 and 3,000 years ago because the sea level then was close to current levels and he suggested that after construction, tectonic activity caused it to be submerged below the sea level. Archaeologist Richard J. Pearson believes this to be unlikely, but Masaki Kimura believes he can identify a pyramid a castle, roads, monuments and even a stadium, he further stated that he believes the structures to be remnants of Yamatai culture. Supporters of the artificial origins theory, such as Graham Hancock, also argue that while many of the features seen at Yonaguni are also seen in natural sandstone formations throughout the world, the concentration of so many peculiar formations in such a small area is highly unlikely. They also point to the relative absence of loose blocks in the flat areas of the formation, which would be expected if they were formed solely by natural erosion and fracturing. Robert Schock, who believes the monument was formed geologically, has noted that the rocks are swept with strong currents. Kimura said that the largest structure looks like a complicated monolithic stepped pyramid that rises from a depth of 25 metres, which is 85 feet. Strangely, neither of the government groups of Japan that control the region have carried out any research or preservation work on the sites. Instead, they are leaving any such efforts to researchers and other interested individuals looking to explore the ancient wonder to try to understand what it is and why it exists. 
On hearing about the find in the 1980s, Kimura said his initial impression was that the formations could be natural, but he then changed his mind after his first dive. And he said about the place, he said, I think it's very difficult to explain away their origin as being purely natural because of the vast amount of evidence of man's influence on these structures. For example, Kimura said that he has identified quarry marks in the stone, rudimentary characters etched onto carved faces, and rocks sculpted into the likeliness of animals. And he said in a statement to the National Geographic magazine, he said that the characters and animal monuments in the water, which I have been able to partially recover in my laboratory, suggest the culture comes from the Asian continent with one example that I have described as an underwater sphinx that resembles a Chinese or ancient Okinawan king. Kimura said that he has identified 10 structures off Yonaguni and a further five related structures off the main island of Okinawa. In total, the ruins covered an area spanning 984 feet by 492 feet, which is 300 meters by 150 meters. And according to him, the structures include the ruins of a castle, a triumphal arc, five temples, and at least one large stadium, all of which are connected by roads and water channels, and are partly shielded by what could be huge retaining walls. So the question then becomes, is there an ancient 10,000 year old pyramid and city kingdom culture underwater at Yonaguni? The answer, beyond a shadow of a doubt, has yet to be confirmed. The Yonaguni island area is a popular scuba diving destination. Many would say it's a must-see when diving near Okinawa. Now, divers travel to explore the mysterious Yonaguni pyramid-like structure and its surrounding artifacts. Just like the lost city of Atlantis, Japan's Yonaguni monument will likely always inspire skepticism. Any evidence found can only support speculation and often generates a counter-argument. However, the site's mystery adds to its appeal because sometimes it's best not to be sure. Instead, diving into the unknown presents a much more fulfilling challenge. The chain of islands was once known as the Ryukyu Kingdom, independent from Japan and recognised by the Chinese Empire at the time. Back in the 17th century, it was an important trading post, and the international influence is also tangible today. The local sake, made with Thai-style long-grain rice and distilled using methods also learned from the Kingdom of Siam. According to Shizan Sikan, the Heavenly Emperor, who lived in the Heavenly Gosuku, ordered Amam Ikyu to create Ryukyu Islands. She descended to the earth on the spot of Sefa Utaki and later built Tamangusuku Castle and Chinen Castle. These are a people that were overwhelmed by their perceptions. Plasma forming discharges forming landmasses exist in these mythological creation stories. These were different times on planet Earth and a time when pyramid-like structures were erected across the planet. This influence to motivate a people into such a dramatic cultural response is lost to us today and therefore we don't have the understanding that these ancient peoples were influenced by. Planet-wide we see the motivation and mobilisation. People were overwhelmed by what they were witnessing in the sky. For now, we can only imagine what the Yonaguni monument may have been to an ancient earthling. Japan's ancient underwater pyramid is certain to continue to mystify scholars for years to come. But what do you guys think about the Yonaguni monument anyway? Comments below. And as always guys, thank you for watching.